Hello everyone. I'm going to introduce you to my new grid framework for Unity 3D. Let's take a look at some of its features and see what you can do with them. Let's start by creating a new grid from scratch. First of all, I made a, an empty game object. Nothing special, just an empty game object named grid. And I'm going to apply a grid to it. Now, as you can see, we have two kinds of grid. Rectangular grid and hexagonal grid. Hexagonal grids don't work yet. They will be added later, along with triangular grids. For now, let's stick to the rect grid. I add it, just like any other component. And now we have a bunch of values. We can't see our grid yet. We need a draw rect grid component. And now we can see it. As you can see, we have here um, a bunch of colors, which we can use to color our axes in different colors. For example, red, green, and blue for X, Y, and Z. We also have vertex color, which can be used to give vertices a certain color, but we are not using vertices for now. We can also hide our grid. We can hide individual axes, for example, x axis hidden. We can hide the grid while playing, so if I hit play button, no grid visible. And here comes the interesting part. Here comes the interesting part. So first of all, we have the size of our we have the size of our grid. and spacing. Pretty self-explanatory. As, as you can see, our grid is in 3D space. And to move our grid, we move our game object. We can just get... Okay. So we can move our game object. And this moves our grid as well. We can also rotate our game object. And the rotation gets applied to the entire grid. Let me reset it. The one thing which doesn't get applied is scaling. So if I scale my game object, it doesn't change the grid. To change the scale of my grid, I need to use spacing, as I mentioned previously. Now what you must keep in mind is, all grids are infinite in size. So even though you can see only this part, our grid extends into infinity, or at least as far as the engine goes. So our grid, what you see here, is just a visual representation of the entire grid. You can use size to limit the grid for certain purposes, for example, if you want to use for it for pathfinding and you don't want your characters to wander off into infinity, you can reference the size of the grid. So I've got a 2D platformer here and I'm using my grid to position objects like blocks, enemies, water layout, anything, basically. The advantage is it gives me a certain precision. For example, I know my character can jump only five units high, and this lets me use certain knowledge, so I, so I can plan my level accordingly. For example, I will know there is no way the player can reach this block from here, but if they jump here and then up here, they can reach it. So once I set up my grid, I can use it for reference. For example, I could take this and put it here, and it kind of fits, but it's not perfect. So instead, I am going to take my grid and put it here. I can align stuff. So if I put it approximately where I want it, and hit the button, 
it snaps right into place. I can also use auto snapping, which means anytime I drag something, it gets snapped to the grid automatically. I can auto snap several objects at once. So anyway, uh, anywhere I drag it, it always fits. Of course, it supports undo as well. I can also scale stuff. For example, if I take this block and I say I want it four units wide. So I fit it approximately and then I say scale selected and it gets fills it gets filled up to five units. Okay, let's take a closer look at all these features. First of all, I need my grid and I need to pull it to put it in this field. Okay, and now I can start. So let's start by with this block. So it kind of fits into my grid, which means we can align it, and it fits perfectly. Put it here, align. I can also align several objects at once. So if I, se if I select these two, and then click Align Selected, they both get aligned. Our next feature on the list is Ignore Root Objects. Basically a root object is an empty game object which has no parent on, on it of its own and only carries stuff for organization's sake. So if I click this flag and click Align Selected, nothing happens. Next thing is Include Children, which means if I align an object which has children, all these children will, will be aligned as well. And there you go. Next thing we have is Affected Layers. Well, what it does is basically it lets you choose which layers will be affected by Align Scene and Scale Scene. So if I say nothing and click Align Scene or Scale Scene, nothing happens. If I say everything, well, basically, stuff happens. And now that I mentioned these, what Align Scene and Scale Scene do, they are basically like Align Selected and Scale Selected, except they affect the entire scene. So they are a quick way of getting things done. Now one final look at scaling. What scaling does is it makes your object fit as closely to the grid as possible. So in, in this case our object will expand so it fills two, two spaces. If I align it now it fits in, inside the grid. I'm running short of time, so I need to wrap this first part up. What I didn't cover was the scripting functionality, because as you can see, each grid is just like any other component. So all these aspects, we can access them through scripting. We can use all sorts of functions. For example, we could find the nearest face of a given transform inside the grid, or access vertices, convert world coordinates to grid coordinates, Basically, all the stuff you would expect from a grid framework. So make sure to tune in for part 2 of my introduction videos.